European come and challenge you. Uh, Farah Muhammad came in 1930. <laughs> you feel the point I'm making? Columbus discovered America in 1492. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's like MK Ultra. The mind has just been programmed to just say out a few particular things and then that's it. So we got to constantly challenge ourselves and not get so caught up in truth that we're not flexible enough to be in a moment with utilization of our minds. A lot of people mistake that. They say, well, you know, you're real philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> in philosophy, if you understand what it means, it means a lover of wisdom. That's, the, that's what philosophy means, a love of truth. So everybody should be philosophical. According to what the context of the word means, everybody should be a philosopher, a love of wisdom. And that's when you get your highest degree, your master's degree. What, do, what does a master do? What does the doctorate do different? They, they start doctoring up their stuff now. You feel the moment they go beyond the basis of the information, and now they can doctor it and put it together themselves. They mastered it now. So now it's not even what, so you study all that information dogmatically, multiple choice, remembering A, B, and C. You wrote the paper exactly like they said, so you can become a master and then put your own spin on it. Come on now. Then why did you get an F for putting your own spin on it in class? You came and you wrote the paper how you wanted it to be, right? They said, oh, this is not, this does not fit. You get an F. Because you did not write this paper within the guidelines of this institution. But the highest that you can attain is a master's degree. Where now you're authorized to spin things now. You feel what I'm making? Mm -hmm. You're authorized to put your spin on it. To give your perspective. But you fail for giving your perspective from the beginning. So none of them are masters. Because they never mastered themselves. They didn't believe that they were masters. But that's deep. So we got to constantly challenge ourselves to think, to be creative, to come up with new ideas, to look at things from different perspectives. This is the martial arts school of thought. Philip, I'm making. As well, it is the school of physical well being. It is the school of thought. And it's why so many people that are into martial arts are attracted to this information. Because that's what it is. I always looked at it back in the day. I used to go and debate with Christians. It always felt like martial arts to me. You know, it always felt like a battle, which we were more than prepared to win. No one can stand against us when we start debating with people with this information. They will come with their Christian and with their Islam, get your Quran, get everything, come on with it. We had some brothers in the nation come here last week. Well, I told them now so bad. They don't even call me no more. I've never whooped somebody so bad in the debate. What well, he said, brother, I'm just not even coming. I said, come. I, I invite them to come. So it's not, if Europeans come and debate and tra challenge our information, it doesn't mean we love Europeans. We love for the battle. Bring the European scholars and the professors and scientists. Bring them. We will debate. There's no problem. They will be seeing things differently when they leave here. Just the fact that you stirred something up in them Come means, on. means that, that, that the truth is standing on its own. It doesn't have to be defended. So that means what you're saying is affecting them enough for them to have to want to value. If you're secure about what you believe in, then you don't feel the need to fight a word. But the only thing you can properly defend is truth. So there's no separation. If you defend it and you win, it's because it was truth. If you defend it and you lose, it's because it was not truth. So through your desire to defend, you will come to truth. Because you can't really defend nothing else. You can't defend nothing that is not true. You get wrong the wrong person and it's not true, they'll tear that down. So quickly. So even when I'm speaking, you're seeing the elimination of what has been torn down. And this is what is good. Because I tell people, the Christians, I will debate with them anytime, any place. I'll come to your church. I will come to your mosque. I will debate with your imam. I will debate with your priest. I will debate with the Buddhists, anybody, the rabbi, bring it. We will sit down and debate with you on any subject matter at any time. That's what we got to get. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to get. And, the, and, and 
That's the same thing as on a, being on a physical level of willing to take on any competitor on a physical level. The, comp the, the competition for truth. And when you take that perspective, you don't get mad at people disagree. It's hard to be competitive in a, in a mental way and be dogmatic. If you're dogmatic, you get mad when people disagree with you and challenge you. You get frustrated. But from a competitive level, you're not frustrated. You embrace the challenge. It's the reality. Mm -hmm. So that's the opposite of dogmatism, to be mentally competitive. Because that means you're not so attached to your thoughts where you can't take on the necessary view or necessary winning position. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people attach to their thoughts. If it's untrue, they're going to hold on to it and get mad at you because you don't believe it. That's people that are really attached to their thoughts. They'll get mad. You can show them how what you're saying doesn't make any sense. And they will get mad, upset at you for showing them the truth. But if you argue with somebody who's competitive, who's sharp in their mind, they're like, you know what, that's a good position. I can let that go. You feel the one like that? Why are you holding on something to something that is not true? That is nothing but ego. There is no development in that. If it's not true and you hold it on to it, how are you going to grow? Even if you want to be right and save your face, how do you grow? That's why I said people love Europeans, love the ones that accept truth. If you show them the historical facts and show them the information and you lay it out for them, and they say, well, you know, I don't agree with this. What's the problem? It's the historical information. Go read and study and open up the books yourself and look at the information and what does it say? And they say, well, I don't agree. Well, you don't accept truth. Do you see the point I'm making? We're not telling them anything that's not in their books. Why is it if you tell them that black people are the majority, the colored man, the black people of color outnumber them? What's so hard about that? Do you understand what I'm making? What type of narcissistic thinking would have them think that they're somehow a majority somehow somewhere? They avoid facts and avoid truth all the time. There's no doubt that the European is outnumbered by the melanated people on the planet. This is clear evidence. Europeans will deny that. Because and he'll deny it by trying to split us up into different ethnicities, you know, in different cultures. He, he'll even profess to know more about tribalism than we do. Oh, that's because that's if you put the Nigerians with the Ghanaians. What the hell you know about a Nigerian and a Ghanaian? <laughs> you see what I'm making? If you put the Moroccans with the Libyans, what the hell you know about Moroccans and Libyans? So they will use anything to keep black people divided to make them a majority. That's if you put the Jamaicans with the Africans. Or the people from South America with the Africans. Any little divisions that they can use to make themselves look like they're on top. Because that's how they've been winning. They've simply been making themselves look like they're on top. We believe it. So how do we get out of that without challenging everything that they have to offer and have to bring us? How do we do it? So the solution is to challenge everything that they put before us. That's the way you get out the box. Challenge it. If they bring it to you, challenge it. And if it can't stand through a challenge, then it's something you should not keep trying to hold on at all. Challenge it. That'll take you upon all their superstitions, all their religious illusions. Challenge it. A lot of stuff that we hold on to as superstitions, as a way of life, that we are holding on to as a culture, it is bullshit. And we are holding on to it as though it is true. At least 80% of our cultural reference and frameworks are bullshit in this society. And we really hold on to it like it's the truth. And the fact that we keep holding on to it keeps our people in the condition that they're in today. I was building with the brother last week. We were talking about unconditional love. And that sounded good for me for a while. Then in debating with him and, and, and dialoguing with the brother, I come to the realization that there's no such thing as unconditional love. <laughs> that sounds good, though. And my mind felt real comfortable holding that idea. When I looked at it, I said, well, wait a minute. How do you love somebody unconditionally? First of all, you love them due to a condition. You can't know love somebody outside of a condition. When you're looking at a body, a form, a human being, you're looking at a condition. A spirit in a condition, right? This person's this way because of a condition. 
This person's this way because they're conditioned this way. Even if they condition themselves by lifting weights and working out, they're conditioned. You're looking at a damn condition. <laughs> and then you're going to mean you love a condition unconditionally? How the hell do you love a condition unconditionally? <laughs> but nobody's challenging none of this information. <laughs> you understand what I'm making? That's an oxymoron. <laughs> then they say, you know, you in love with my body and not my mind. You don't love my mind. What the hell is the difference? The body becomes what the mind does. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the difference between your body and your mind. Could you, could you demonstrate that for me? Because wherever the mind goes, the ass follows. <laughs> so I cannot love you in separate. Well, step out your body and let me love that. You understand what I'm making? Step out the body as a mind and I'll just love your mind. But until you do that, I can't separate your mind from your body. But it's little things that we've held on to that we have refused to challenge. How do you love somebody unconditioned, unconditionally when they change and they don't even become a condition of which you can love them anymore? They leave and the conditions change due to their changing. You feel the point I'm making? Now they're not even a condition for you to love in the same way. You can't love them in the same way anymore. So the condition of your love has changed due to the changing of them. Do you understand the point I'm making? So they have set us up for failure by accepting that information and accepting these lies. Why? The people who know the truth, they sit on top and don't get caught up into none of this. And we're here fighting and arguing and bickering over something that don't even, ain't even real, something that's not even realistic. That's hard for people to, to really to embrace that. A lot of concepts, if we're going to build a nation and we're going to improve the condition of our people, a lot of that stuff don't have to be thrown out. It don't make sense. Whether it's considered to be legal or unlegal by thought, it makes absolutely no sense. And if you're going to have a nation, it's going to have to change. They go and say, that shall not steal. How the hell are you going to get your shit back? If you didn't take everything that belongs to us <laughs> and sit us over here with nothing and a Bible <laughs> and tell us, that shall not steal, read that Bible. <laughs> How do I go get my stuff back? If I go and say, let me get my stuff back, they say, well, it is a proper process. Oh, That's going to take you a hundred years. Turn the left cheek. <laughs> There's a pro proper process to get your stuff back. Wait, hold up, slow down a minute. <coughs> Stand in line to get your stuff back. What sense do that make? Thy shall not steal. But as soon as you go to get your stuff back, you're stealing now. Now you're breaking the law. Let's arrest you. We're not challenging their information at all. So by not challenging it, we keep falling victim to it. Everything has to be challenged. Every aspect of our reality, every aspect of our society, all of that has to be challenged. Because we have been set up for flaw. We have been set up for failure by taking those particular ideas. That's, That's what That's test the spirit right. means. When, he, when Jesus was talking about test the spirit, he wasn't talking about just some entity or, or, or some arbitrary energy concept. He, he was referring to the fact that all, every word, every action has a spirit of its own. So you made me realize by saying that, that test the spirit, he was really talking about test everything that you know, question everything that you know. That means question the Bible itself. Right. Question, the spirit by the spirit, right? Question everything. You won't hear that it, it's like, in the church. Huh? I say you won't hear that in the church, and I like I thought the same things. I read the same scripture. You know, it, it it does actually say test. You know, everything that you you know know. That's deep. Dang. Now that's well, that's heavy. That, I didn't. But know I haven't been in one church that will get on that subject because mm -hmm. they want to keep. People there, you know what I'm saying, trapped in their, in their teachings. That matters. If you ask a question, it's blasphemy. But yet the Bible just said, <laughs> test the spirit. Test everything. You just told me, test everything. And when I ask a question and use my mind, my own free will, free thinking, 
That is of the devil. Right. If 